Hey guys, uh, today is feeding day, so I thought I'd lead you through some uh, feeding here. We're gonna give everyone uh, a good bit of food, including Zeus behind me. Um, we'll get everyone taken care of, except for Chloe, who's on the bottom, because uh, she ate more recently than the others, um, and she also eats uh, live. So I'm not gonna do any filming of anything dying. I don't really believe in that. I don't know that we really need to uh, film something like that. But nonetheless, I'll show you what I have to go through uh, whenever I feed these and hopefully give you some pointers along the way to help you if you're looking at feeding your snakes uh, for the first time or if you're looking at maybe how feeding works before you buy a snake. Uh, we'll learn something together along the way. So stay tuned and we'll go over those, okay? All right guys, step one, secure yourself some good frozen thawed uh, Whatever you're, whatever you're looking to feed, depending on the snake, uh, one of the good ways to choose uh, the correct size of food is to take a look at the thickest part of the snake itself. Uh, perhaps take something simple like a band and wrap it loosely around the snake to see how wide it can be. Mark it off. When you go to the pet store to buy some food or if you're getting it uh, online, take a note of the circumference they're selling the food by and take that measurement and apply that to the food. Um, you don't really want the food to show any more than a small bulge on the snake itself. You don't want it to be something real big. Some of the best things that you can do though is to secure yourself a large amount of food. I got about a hundred here that I can go through. Uh, these are for the larger snakes. I've got some for the smaller. I'm going to set those aside right now. I'll show you how I go through and thaw them. The best ways to do that, but mostly, um, find a way to buy them through a distributor. That's uh, going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, these from my local pet store are probably about maybe a dollar and a half to two dollars a piece. Um, through this distributor I got them for 60 cents a piece. So I'll bring the cost way down when you can buy them from someone who specializes in uh, growing them and uh, distributing them as well. So I'm gonna set those aside and I'll meet you guys in a minute, okay? All right guys and gals, the time has come. I've got my mice and rats separated. Brought them out here. So I got large one for Zeus. I got some of the larger ones that we're gonna be feeding here for the three larger, and then some for the remaining uh, three smaller snakes. Of course, with one exception, that being uh, uh, Chloe, who of course is eating live, which we're not doing today, as I mentioned earlier. So a really simple thing, all that I do is I run the water till it gets real hot. Take your mice, which right now are frozen. Stick them right in a the bag. In fact, I'm gonna put a bunch more in this bag because I think this will work out. But make your water real hot. You never wanna use boiling water. You don't really wanna cook the, the mice. Snakes aren't really into cooked food. So I'm gonna stick them in there as much as I can fit. Good to go. Now they're in there. Keep the water's hot enough. It is burning hot. So let's get this filled up. Okay, that's filled. I'm gonna close this bag. Without it emptying all over, of course. Let me get that turned off so you guys can hear me. So, at this point, because I have them in a bag like so, I can just set them in the sink. In this case, I'm using a you know, utility sink. I'm not using a sink that I ever really use for anything involving hygiene. Um, <clears throat> highly recommended that you would do the same. Let's get this medium rat out of here. Zeus is dinner. And I don't know the integrity of this bag. It might have a leak, so I'm still gonna use one of my other bags. I don't know if this is gonna fit in that bag though. I don't think it will. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, it's gonna be close, but it looks like, looks like it will. So, let's get that in there. Turn it on all the way. Hot. Get that in there. Fill it up as much as you can without burning yourself. And that's gonna do it for this step. At this point, I'm gonna leave these mice and rats in these bags to brew. They're just gonna sit just like this in this hot water, probably for about 10-15 uh, minutes in which they'll thaw out from the hot water. Uh, they'll come out of their wet, but I actually find that that helps sometimes in the feeding procedure. If you're having issues um, having the snake take the mouse or the rat, you can always try uh, instead using a warm or a hot uh, chicken broth. 
I found sometimes that can make some picky snakes go for food. They like the smell of chicken on there. If they're still being really difficult, what you can do is you can take a, let's see, I'll take one of these. You can actually take a razor and on the head of the mouse, kind of gross, but it works, take a razor and just cut a slit right down the center of the head there. Uh, that's actually gonna open up and you're gonna have some, uh, some brain material coming out. <clears throat> in which case it's gonna smell a lot better to the, uh, to the snake. Essentially what you have to do is you have to make the food smell as good as possible for them. Or if you have a really picky eater, they'll reject it if they just don't, if they're not convinced that it's something that's gonna taste good. Um, I don't know if, they, actually I shouldn't say it, it's not taste the issue. You want to um, appeal to their uh, instincts by making it actually convincing that it is food and it's, it's, it's full of nutrients because they're gonna be looking for something that tastes and smells like a rat. Something that's been in the freezer for, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months. May not smell initially like one to them, so you may have to doctor it up a little bit. So I'm gonna let them go for a little bit. You guys don't have to watch it for the next 15 minutes, but I'll be back in a little bit with the thaw to do some feeding. All right, guys, I'm back here. We've given them some time to thaw. I've got them in a bag here. Important thing to note after you've had them in really hot water, make sure that they have a chance to cool off a bit. Um, snakes don't care what temperature something is. We've seen them time and time again burn themselves on hot pads and things like that. They will bite it, they'll coil around it. You don't want it to be scalding hot. If you can't touch it, they can't touch it. So, um, first thing, just grab it by the tail. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dangle it in front of Isabella's head for a moment. See if she shows some interest. And she should strike. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna close hers up. At this point, leave them alone. Since I've had escapes here before, I jam little pieces of paper in there. Kind of stops them from rattling too. Let's drop down. Nagini is ready to go. Already looking out, she can smell the food. She's one of the larger snakes, she's a very good eater, so she's gonna get one of the bigger mice. These are uh, adult mice, large mice, but she can see it already, she's tracking it. Go to this side. Yeah, she's hungry. So, get in front of her, she'll snap right away at it. Oh, you're just mad, huh? Come on. Sometimes if you get it to them, let me get her, let me get her back here. Back up, back up, back up, back inside. There's no need to be like that. Back up, all right. Now you guys won't be able to see this, which is gonna make this a little bit tougher. I'm gonna get that out of the way. And let's see if I can do this without getting tagged. There we go, see? So if your snake, that actually caught me, it made me jump a little bit there. So if your snake is showing some anger, don't give up. Uh, territorial. Nagini's just a little bit of an ass, so uh, we got her to get some food. So we're going to move on to the next snake here. I'm going to pause the video so I can prepare the next mouse, which is going to be for Lorelei. So it's going to be a nice small one for her since she uh, is on the smaller side. We'll let that do its thing and we'll go from there. All right, so here's Lorelei. I got her the smallest one available. That's probably just about right for her. If you look, let's get this out of the way. This is where she actually made the escape before was between these pieces. I'm gonna get this opened up. Hey, yeah, don't don't go that way. Don't go that way. What are you doing? Being difficult? There we go. I gotta be careful here too. My fingers smell like uh, rat and mouse, so I don't want to get her any ideas. So let's see if she'll take. Now you may have noticed I'm actually feeding them inside of their enclosures. I don't really believe in taking them out of their enclosures to eat. One thing that I do that I, that helps, uh, there you go, that helps keep from getting bit while they're in their enclosure is they know if they get touched with a snake hook first, just a simple pet on their back uh, or head, they know that it's not feeding time. They know that it's handling time. It's nice and clear to them. Uh, Nagini's still hissing at me. So um, she really doesn't like my voice. Um, so if I just pet one of them on the head, they'll know it is not feeding time. So a lot of people say, well, if you feed them in the tank, they'll start to attack you and blah, blah, blah. Just some simple hook training 
uh, will take care of that, and that way you don't have to worry about moving them all the time. I have found if I move them outside of their normal enclosure and I feed them, or try to feed them, they're less likely to strike and they get more temperamental, especially with some of the more temperamental eaters such as the Demerals boas, like Chloe, um, who through many times of trying will only eat um, frozen, uh, not frozen, sorry, so will only eat live. So I'm gonna move on. We're gonna feed probably the most fun of the bunch to feed and that's gonna be Zeus, a uh, nice big medium rat and uh, we'll watch her strike too. So be back in a second. All right, Kimosabis. Time to feed Zeus. Probably one of the best strikers here. Let me make sure that I can keep her back in case she decides to come forward. Snake hook is a really good investment. I finally decided uh, to get one uh, with a couple of my snakes, including the one that I got from Kemper that is absolutely gorgeous, but uh, kind of is on the bad temperament. Now, snakes are like people. Some of them are gonna be really nice. And some of them are just going to be jerks. It just so happens I probably just got one of the jerks. So um, I'll work with him and see if I can help that. But I think he's just going to be cantankerous. So got to watch my fingers because, again, I smell just like rat. A lot of moisture in there, but that's been helping her because she's been shedding a bit. And make sure you stay back. Stay back. Stay back. All right. I don't want to touch her too much because I don't want to send the message that she's not eating. Look at this nice big, nice big rat. See, she's hungry, she's tracking it. Hopefully you guys can see that and you'll see her strike here. Go ahead. It's a nice big one. There we go. She's kind of picky too. She doesn't really like it unless I put it right in front of her. As you can see, she wasn't going to go for the long strike. She was going to go for the short one. So I'm going to get these weighed back down. And we'll get that taken care of. And now we have three more snakes to do. And we'll go from there. All right, see you guys in a second. Now we move on. And we're going to get into more of the pure Surinams. Ugh. Let's see here. This happens to be the second one that I got after Lorelei. And yeah, you're still you're still biting at the glass. Nagini really, really hates my voice. Absolutely hates my voice. So let's give you another one of the relatively smaller ones because you're not quite as big. I'll take this lid off. Really good temperament on this one too. I really, really enjoy spending time uh, with this one. So here we go. See if you're hungry. This is the only one that's ever regurgitated, and it set him back a little bit. So we'll see if we get a taker. Essing up. There we go. Good strike, good coil. Beautiful. Always makes me happy when, uh, <clears throat> when he eats. Nice little curl on you. Let's move you very gently. And here's the one I've been afraid of the whole time. And Nagini is still in the background hissing and smacking at me. Hopefully when I leave the room, uh, he'll eat. She'll eat, sorry. Let's see here. So, you can hear the hissing already. So this is where this comes into play. Alright, remember hissing is not always bad when it comes to feeding, just watch your hands. Because if I get him to strike, he'll probably just keep it. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes too, with snakes that are this aggressive, you may just need to leave the food uh, in the tank with them. Let's give you a moment to settle down. He's also not a huge fan of my voice, so I'm going to give him a moment to kind of get used to the fact that I'm here. Don't need to rush the feeding. All right, let's go a little closer. Now that you know it's food. I think he gets it. There we go. Kind of a lazy bite and a lazy coil. But we got him. Uh, hey, what are you doing there? Fattening up and I can't put, can't put that back on you. So I, there's no concern that I have here that uh, he's going to end up eating that mouse. I'm going to put this delicately back on there. 
that seems to settle them down when there's something on top of them like that. And I'm gonna reset the camera and I'll be with you guys in a minute here. Let's feed the world-class boa. Now she always hangs out in this log, but she'll bite right out of it. Let's see if maybe you can see her. She is right there. So let's see if she will end up being a taker. I'm gonna dry it off a little bit. Like so. A little bit of blood, you'll get that, get used to it. It's actually a good thing. I find that they take them more readily when they're a little bit bloody like that. When something's frozen, the blood will crystallize and when it thaws, the, uh, it actually causes some small uh, internal bleeding. So that's why that happens, okay? So, nothing too weird. It's a living creature, once was. So let's see if she's a taker. Right there, look at that. Probably one of the fastest strikes out of all the snakes that I have. Completely gorgeous little one though. So let's see now how everyone eats. So guys, that's how I feed my snakes. A couple of tips that I want to leave you with. Um, as far as reheating uh, and reusing the mice and rats that I have, uh, I have a two reheat maximum. For instance, I just reheated once. If the snakes don't take them, I'll usually leave them in there for probably another hour, two hours or so, see if they take them. Um, if they don't, I try and get them back out of there as fast as possible and cool them off, get them down to a freezing temperature before bacteria has a chance to grow and make your snakes sick. Um, so if you've used it once, uh, snake uh, refuses the food, you reheat it again, snake refuses a second time, at that point I will throw it away. Uh, it's spent way too much time in that uh, unsafe zone where bacteria can start to grow. Um, if you work in the food industry or ever have, you kind of know some of the rules there. You want to keep it outside of that kind of human temperature, human body temperature area because that's where harmful bacteria starts to thrive. Um, so keep it freezing or in this case we're not boiling them so that really doesn't count. So keep it below freezing as often as possible. Aside from that, that is what a feeding looks like for me. Um, I'm not going to show a video of feeding Chloe if you want to see a video of a snake uh, taking a live prey animal. You can check other YouTube videos for that. I, on the other hand, am not going to do that. Um, I'm not going to get all preachy about it, but essentially I just, I, I'm just not going to do it. So I'll keep that, uh, keep that part to myself. I don't watch it myself. I put it in there and I walk away. Snakes got to eat. I understand it's a circle of life. I own the snake. I get it. Um, some, someone has to die in order for something else to eat. So again, I'm not going to get real preachy about it. Um, apart from that, I will have more videos coming soon. I still have to introduce the other half of my snakes. Or not other half, but the other, uh, the other couple. Um, apart from there, I think that's it for today. So I will see you guys on the flip side. Adios.